Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How are you guys doing? If you're new to the channel, my name is Raiz. So yes, I agree with the sister. Getting married young is the better thing to do, I'd say. I think perhaps not everyone may be able to handle it. But definitely getting married young is the better thing to do. It's a better option between uh, getting uh, between getting married young and getting married old. Um, you know, with getting married old, you probably uh, acquire some habits that might be difficult to integrate with a partner. Or, I mean, you know, you might come across some uh, incidences that could lead into haram. And, you know, that's, that's, that's the big issue. Is it me or are we best friends? Yeah, I mean, I'm definitely your best friend. And that's, that's great for you. Is this brother suggesting that he has another wife or is getting another wife? Although with those hand gestures, I don't think you would get another wife. If you want your house clean, hire me a maid. I agree with Sister Amira. I agree. I'll hire the maid and I'll marry the maid. Oh, oh, I'll marry the maid. <laughs> okay. So you know, you know, because I, I'll hire her, marry her. At what age does a woman's beauty peak? 30, 20. Well, there's a big difference between 20 and 30. 30, she's five years out from high risk pregnancy. It's long before 30. It's around 23 that she peaks in her beauty. Okay. That's her currency. Her currency peaks at 23. What comes after the peak? Everyone is different, bro. I can't really answer that. It means after 23, it begins to decline. Now, does that mean she's invaluable? Does that mean she's worthless and we toss her to the side of the road? Of course not. That is not what I'm saying. I am simply saying that is the definition of sexual market value. <laughs> This is stay spot on. With haram relationship comes these uh, types of emotions and uh, feelings that, you know, are somewhat deluding, I'd say. Um, and especially for women, you know, women are much more uh, emotionally inclined to become attached and, you know, form this type of bond. And so at the end of it, it kind of like really ruins their attitudes towards getting married or forming uh, a relationship or even getting this bad impression uh, about men or relationships in general. Also, I don't know. And this is why I always say, brothers, ensure that you go through that contract really carefully, ensure that there's no monogamy, and make sure that you are able to, you know, take on another wife later on. You never know how you feel afterwards, um, and she really don't have much of a say with regards to this. And... Of course, it, you need to make sure that you are able to do so, both financially and uh, emotionally, physically as well, I think. When I got married, I got rid of all of my guy friends. And most of my guy friends were my co-workers. So I quit my job. What's it you here? Nobody sent me here. How do you know it's where I live? There is no problem, Akhi. As long as you are not interested in paradise and have no problem in going to hell, you have no problem. Yeah, anyway, yeah, anyway, yeah, anyway. Crazy thing about being Muslim is your friend could just message you and tell you I'm getting married next week. And this is the most normal shit. Like this guy wasn't single today. By next week he was married for a year with five kids. I need to know how you might are doing this. How to talk to your spouse about intimacy. Number one, set some time to talk with them. Make sure it's not when they're stressed or angry or busy or they don't have your attention. Set some time, sit down together, tell them you want to talk to them about this and start the conversation. Number two, do not blame them for your lack of fulfillment. And make sure that's clear. Use I statements. Say, I'm not satisfied. I'd like to try this. I'd like to do that. Do that with me. Okay? Number three, listen to them. You've given them your opinion. Now you have to hear from them. Because a lot of times, you are responsible for what you're not getting out of your sex life with your partner. Hear that again. You are responsible. So you're both there. You're both willing parties. You're both there to communicate. Don't blame them, but also take accountability for yourself. And last but not least, respect their boundaries. So they might not be comfortable doing something. That's okay. You could take it step by step. You can try something adjacent to what you want to try and work your way into that area. But have a good time. Talk to each other. At the end of the day, whether you enjoy sex. Intimacy is definitely an issue within the Muslim community, I think. Um, you know, coming out of uh, 
I would say coming people coming out of uh, immigrant families, families perhaps from uh, certain parts of the world, um, going into the West after that, they have this tendency to get really mixed up with what uh, Western um, ideas are about intimacy and sex and all those type of things, whereas, you know, the rest of the world is slightly more conservative. But I think specifically in the uh, sub-Indian con- uh, continent or parts of, the, of, of, of Asia, I think it's very, very conservative and very taboo almost to um, speak about sex and intimacy. And from what I understand, that it's, uh, you know, Islam is really an open book with regards to it. So I think uh, both brothers and sisters should look into, into this, you know, obviously going into marriage and uh, within marriage, of course. And on that note, guys, Jazakallah Khair for tuning in. Please be sure to like, share, subscribe, and keep following the channel, inshallah. Jazakallah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.